When processing astrophotography photos, there is a lot to learn, and there are a few things you can do to make your pictures just even a little bit better. In this video, I will explain a few processes to help you get going. Whether you're a beginner or you've been at it for a while, maybe stepped away and are coming back, Either way, some of these tips should help you. Now, I will warn you that most of these tips do apply to PixInsight because that's what I use to process, but they do carry over to things like Photoshop. All right, so the first tip I have for you is to create different stacked images. What I mean by this is not every stacking software is perfect. As much as we would love to think that it will get rid of every plane and every satellite and deal with that one tiny little passing cloud, sometimes it misses it. So what I recommend is, say you're using weighted batch pre-processing in PixInsight, or you're using Deep Sky Stacker, change how many frames you're actually going to keep. So for example, here in Deep Sky Stacker, when you are in here and ready to register your stack pictures, if you go to select the best percentage of pictures and stack them, do one that's like, let's say 60% and then one that's 80%. That way, you make sure that those planes and those satellites are not in your pictures. Now, if you're using PixInsight, you might want to blink your images. And like here, you see on screen, there were a couple clouds in this, in this blink, and there was definitely an airplane in that blink and another satellite. And you can manually remove those and then do your weighted batch pre-processing. The reason I mentioned to do different stacks or to change your percentages is sometimes less is more. When you get rid of some of the bad frames, that just allows the good frames to come out and your pictures to turn out even better. The next tip I have for you is always remove your stars. Stars can be tricky to deal with, especially if you're dealing with an object, say the Horsehead Nebula, where you have a really bright star right in the middle of the frame. So if you remove the star, then you can process the object without worrying about overblowing the stars. Now, when you remove the stars, you wanna do it as early as possible in your processing. That way you can keep the stars as tame as possible. And the programs to do that are Starnet++ and Star Exterminator. Now, in PixInsight, Star Exterminator and Starnet++ can do star removal before stretching. But if you're using Photoshop, you'll have to do a little bit of stretching first and then use Starnet. Now luckily, Starnet and Star Exterminator both work for PixInsight and Photoshop, and Star Exterminator also works for uh, Affinity. However, Starnet, if you're not using it in PixInsight, it has a standalone version where you'll have to save your image, run Starnet on it, and then bring it back into, say, Photoshop, and keep going that way. Now, the nice thing is, is that Starnet++ is free. However, Star Exterminator is not free, but I've used it and I will say it is well worth the money. All right, tip number three I have for you is when you're doing your stretch, always make sure that you leave the background a little bit gray. Never clip the blacks. And the reason for that is that you're gonna lose some detail on the faint edges of your object. Now looking here at my Seagull Nebula picture, which has the stars removed, I have the histogram transformation. Now this is a stretched picture, but I can get the point across using this. If I go in here to where this little slider is and pull the blacks in, you can see that the faint edges of the seagull start to disappear and then the background just looks unnaturally black. And if I were to actually process it again, and pull it in, I would pull it in maybe to about there. That way there's still a little bit of color in the background, but I'm not losing these very faint edges. So when you're doing your processing and you're stretching, take care not to clip the blacks. That way you don't lose any faint details. All right, I have a few more for you, but I do have a question for you. If you had a friend that was just getting started and they were processing their very first image, what tip would you give them that I'm not providing in this video? Let me know down in the comments below. Moving on to tip number four, and that is find something to do while those long processes run. It doesn't matter if it's PixInsight or Photoshop, there are some scripts and add-ons that take a long time to run. Now, a good example in PixInsight is pulling up Easy Processing Suites, Easy Denoise. Now, if I were to run that on this right now, at least on my computer, it takes a good 15 minutes. Keep in mind that when you are doing these scripts, it is based on your hardware. So if you have an older laptop or a, an older PC, it might take a little bit longer. Or if you have something brand new, fresh off the market, it might not take near as long. But my recommendation is 
if you know generally how long these scripts are going to run, set it up so that you're processing and then you have something else to go do while these are running. So if you know that this script is going to take eight hours, kick it off before going to work and just let it run. Or if you know it's only going to take about an hour, maybe if you got some grocery shopping to go do, go ahead and go do that. You don't have to sit here and wait for them because processing does take a long time, but you can also save yourself some time by just going and doing something else while waiting. Tip number five is be subtle. When you're making your adjustments, you want to do very small adjustments and do multiple iterations of it. So for example, here, using that same stretched uh, seagull picture, if I wanted to process it more using this real-time preview, if I do real subtle adjustments, then I can really fine-tune how I want this to look. And see, I'm liking that right there. And see, now I got that nice black background that I was talking about earlier. But if I reset it and then just go, ooh, big, right, then it's, it's blowing out things. Or if I go the opposite direction, then you're losing a lot of detail. So always be subtle. Do very small adjustments. You know, very small, just like that. And a little gentle S curve. And then you can go ahead and save it reset and then maybe you want to do the saturation a little bit so pull that up just very ever so slightly and i like that so save it and just do multiple iterations you will be able to pull out more details in multiple smaller iterations than you would just grabbing this and just yanking it as high as it can go however sometimes it is fun to make weird looking pictures like this one i did say i had five tips for you but i actually do have a bonus tip for you astrophotography can take a very long time to learn it's not an overnight process don't get discouraged. Sometimes a picture might not turn out exactly how you wanted it. Sometimes maybe you had a problem with the hardware, maybe the processing side of things went a little bit wrong and it didn't turn out the way you wanted. However, use each processing experience as a learning experience. Maybe you learned something this time. Use that as a positive, don't get discouraged. Use that thing you learned on your next image. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.